This is the smell of the leftover tuna fish sandwich you left in your lunchbox over the weekend in a wimpy trash bag. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy! <sighs> Blech! And this is the smell of that same sandwich in a hefty, ultra-strong trash bag. Hefty, hefty, hefty! Ah, <sighs> <sighs> smell the difference? Hefty Ultra Strong has Arm & Hammer with continuous odor control, so no matter what's inside your trash... <sighs> Hmm. You can stay one step ahead of Stinky. And for bigger jobs, try the superior strength of hefty large black bags. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC. Now for our story. This morning early, Aunt Mary Lane had taken the little pickup truck and started out for Wakefield. The rest of the family was sleeping late after the excitement of the previous evening when the new supper club had opened. The sun was just beginning to dispel the moisture from the fields, and as Aunt Mary Lane guided the car along the familiar road, she was thinking how peaceful it all looked. If only, she thought, people's lives could flow as smoothly, as gracefully, as that curving line of the willows edging the riverbank. But recently, even in her own family, there had been difficulties, confusions. And now all these problems seemed to have converged at the same time. Well, finally, Aunt Mary reached her destination, the home of David Bowman, Kit's uncle. Her old friend greeted her, very pleased. Well, Mary, you're just in time for breakfast. Thank you, David. I've had mine. But I suppose I can have another cup of coffee with you. Although I really shouldn't. Won't hurt you a bit. <laughs> I'm easily convinced. <laughs> Good. I do hate having my meals alone. Come into the breakfast room, Mary. All right. <laughs> you know, David, for a bachelor, you do very well for yourself. Well, Sarah takes very good care of me. Here. Sit here, Mary. Oh, thank you. And Sarah's a good cook. But, of course, not in your class. Here you are. Thank you. Sugar and cream are right there beside oh, you, Mary. Oh, this will be fine, David. I'm not so sure about that, David. Every time I've had dinner here, it's been a regular banquet. <laughs> That's because Sarah's especially fond of you, Mary. It's the best way she knows how to express her feeling. Well, being a bachelor may have its compensations, but I get awfully lonesome at times. In fact, I'm thinking of taking in someone to share this big old house with me. Is that so, David? Who? What would you think if Bill Mead moved in? Bill? Why, that might work out very nicely. He's being evicted from his place in the auto court, you know. Oh, my goodness, no, I didn't know. Peggy hasn't mentioned it. Well, I believe he just found out yesterday. Well, what's happened? He's been there at the auto court so long, I thought he'd be considered a fixture. Oh, I'm sure he's an ideal tenant. But you see, they're tearing the place down. The new road from Huntsville cuts through right at that curve there. I think. So it occurred to me that it might be a very satisfactory arrangement for both of us, Bill, being here. I think you know how fond I am of that boy. Well, he's good company. Yes, indeed he is. It ought to be fine for him too, David. I think Bill needs someone to confide in. Especially another man. Someone he looks up to. So far as that goes, Mary, there's not a soul in this town Bill looks up to more than he does to you. Oh, I believe he respects my judgment and his company. But some of his problems are... Well, you could help him a lot, especially now. That's why... What do you mean, Mary? I thought Bill was getting along fine. His work at the bank has been excellent. Now that he and Peggy had to be married... I, I'll tell you the truth, David. That's why I came to see you today. I doubt very much whether Bill would want to bother you with it. Bother? He ought to know better than that. What is it, Mary? What's wrong? It's about Kit. Kit? You mean he's heard from her? Yes, David. Bill had a long-distance telephone call last night from Miami, Florida. That's where Kit is now. In Miami? Hmm. Hmm. Of course, I couldn't be sure, but I had a notion she'd gone to New York. How is she, Mary? She's not well, David. In fact, she's very ill. What's the matter? Bill was told that it was a mental breakdown. Oh, Mary. Who's taking care of her? That's what I want to talk to you about, David. You see, last night, while we were all out, this call came from Bill from Miami. Mrs. Trumbull over at the auto court had the operator call the farm. The call was from... Paul Cromwell. Cromwell. Wasn't he at Camp Downing while Bill was? Yes, that's right. The four of them, Bill and Peggy, Kit and Paul, went out together all that summer. And then, 
Well, you know what happened after that, David. When Kit decided she'd fallen in love with Bill. Yes. Kit must have known Paul was down there in Miami. I suppose she went there because she simply didn't know what else to do. When she left here and ran away. Well, it's easy to imagine how she must have felt, don't you think so? After the trial? Yes. I remember thinking during the trial that Kit didn't look at all well. And no wonder, Mary, with what she had on her conscience. Yes, Dick. When I look back on it, I only wish I could have done more for her. Talk to her, try to bring her out of herself. But there's always been a wall between us. I couldn't seem to break through it. And I'm afraid Ben Calvert had a great deal to do with Kit's building that wall around herself. Of course he had. It's even possible Kit's present illness, this mental breakdown, had its beginnings a long time ago. Maybe back as far as her childhood. I suppose so. But Mary, if Kit's seriously ill, as you say, who's looking after her? Well, she's under a doctor's care in Paul Cromwell's rooms at this hotel. But, as Paul told Bill, he doesn't want the responsibility. The doctor seems to think she should be sent home back here to Wakefield. But they say she's in no condition to travel alone. Well, naturally. Anyway, it's, it's not Cromwell's lookout. But why in thunder did he call Bill? Why didn't he call her father? Ben's the person who ought to bring her back, see she has proper care. I know. David, Paul did call Ben. Mm hmm And Ben refused to have anything to do with the matter. Ben refused? Well, that seems incredible, but he did. Said he'd have nothing to do with it. But good Lord, what's the matter with the man? You know how I feel about Ben, Mary, but, but to refuse, to neglect his own daughter when she needs him, why, it's beyond understanding. Well, get your niece, David. I was sure yes, that you... Yes, my niece, Mary. But she's Ben Calvert's daughter. I can't understand how he can refuse to help her. Well, we'll have to have a talk, Ben and I. I'll go and see him this morning. Why, David Bowman. Good morning. When Lucy told me you were waiting in the living room, I could hardly believe my ears. Good morning, Jesse. Is Ben here? Well, no, he isn't. Well, that is, he isn't down yet. We were up rather late, you know. It's still quite early to be having callers. Yes, I know. But I have to see him about something important. Oh, I'm sure it must be, or you wouldn't be here. I must say, it's quite a surprise, David, seeing you under Ben's roof. I understood you and Ben had agreed to disagree a long time ago. There are times when one's personal feelings have to be subordinated, Jesse. And this is one of the times. I heard something this morning which shocked me deeply. Shocked you? What on earth do you mean? Something to do with Ben? Something to do with Ben's daughter. Oh, Kit. Yes. I presume you know Kit is quite ill. Yes, we heard about it. So, Paul Cromwell got in touch with you, too. No. He telephoned Bill Mead when Ben refused to assume the responsibility. And now you come around, filled with righteous indignation, to tell Ben how wrong he is. Well, David, I'm afraid you won't... It won't get you very far with Ben. Will you tell Ben I'm here, Jesse? I know how you feel about Ben. You never have approved of the way he brought Kit up. That's true. Well, perhaps I'm prejudiced. After all, Ben is my husband. And I'm more likely to see things from his point of view. But what you seem to forget, David, is the fact that Kit's treated her father abominably. Look at the stunt she pulled about that baby. Kit's been fault in many ways, Jesse. I don't deny that. But a child is a result of its environment, its influences and upbringing. Ben failed Kit ever since he was a youngster. If she's made mistakes, they're as much Ben's as her own. So you think Ben's failing in his parental obligations? I do, most emphatically. That girl is ill. She belongs to her own people. And for Ben to refuse to do anything for her. Well, as I said, you can talk to Ben if you like. Personally, I'm entirely in agreement with him in this thing. It's useless for you and me to argue the point, Jesse. It's a question for Ben to decide. Something he has to face himself. Oh, of course. I merely thought I might save you a lot of trouble, David. Since I'm positive what Ben's answer will be. Thank you, Jesse. But just the same, I'm going to wait. There was a determined look about Ben's brother-in-law, which Jesse observed with secret misgivings. Would David be able to change Ben's attitude toward his daughter? Ben had sworn not to go to Kit's help, but perhaps David had arguments which could reawaken his basic affection for Kit. An affection which Jesse knew still did exist. With a sinking heart, she thought of the possibility that Kit might, after all, return to live in the house on 11th Street, return to her father's affections. 
but not just he thought, if she could avoid it. This is the smell of the leftover tuna fish sandwich you left in your lunchbox over the weekend in a wimpy trash bag. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy! <sniffs> Blech! And this is the smell of that same sandwich in a hefty, ultra-strong trash bag. Hefty, hefty, hefty! Ah, <sighs> smell the difference? Hefty Ultra Strong has Arm & Hammer with continuous odor control, so no matter what's inside your trash. <sniffs> hmm. You can stay one step ahead of Stinky. And for bigger jobs, try the superior strength of hefty large black bags. Fargo, the new virtual assistant from Wells Fargo, makes banking faster and easier. Like this. Fargo, what's my checking account routing number? And this. Fargo, uh, turn off my debit card. And this. Fargo, what did I spend on groceries last month? And that's just the beginning. Do you, Fargo? You can in the Wells Fargo mobile app. Learn more at wellsfargo.com slash getfargo. Terms and conditions apply. Your mobile carrier's availability and message and data rates may apply. Wells Fargo Bank and a member FDIC.